8th Osage Nation Congress to order. It is our HUNCA session, April 11th, 24. The time is 10 a.m. and we are on day 15 of our agenda. Assistant Principal Chief, will you please say our morning prayer? Yes, thank you, Speaker. <clears throat> uh, good morning, everyone. Um, dear Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for this beautiful day and this pretty weather we've enjoyed and, and for the recent rains, Lord. I, and I've said this before, but I enjoyed the change of seasons and uh, spring is one of my favorites. Um, um, Congress has a um, couple weeks left or less and they've got decisions to make that affect those that they serve and uh, we just um, appreciate being able to be sitting in these seats and, and have the ability to affect other, other people's lives and I just ask that you direct and guide us as we do that. I know there's people that, that are experiencing loss and, and mourning and those types of things and Lord and I just ask that you wrap your you know, healing arms around them and comfort them. Lord again I just, um, just want to ask for forgiveness for our sins. All these things I ask in Jesus name. Amen. Thank you. Roll call please. Congressman Bighorse. Present. Congressman Hamilton. Here. Congressman Keene. Present. Congresswoman Lemon. Present. Congressman Maker. Here. Congressman Potts. Present. Congresswoman Redcorn. Here. Congresswoman Rivard. Here. Second Speaker Shaw. Present. Congresswoman Stapler. Present. Congressman Tillman. Here. Speaker Goodbox. Present. Assistant Chief Walker. Here. We are now on approval of the journal. Speaker. Congressman Hamilton. Motion to approve the journal of April 10th as presented. Second. Motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying yes. 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 Any yes. opposed say no. Hearing none, it passes. Thank you. We are now on reports of select committees. Hearing none, we are on reports of standing committees. Congresswoman Rivard. Good morning, thank you, Speaker. Good morning, Assistant Chief and colleagues, and good morning, gentlemen. The Commerce, Gaming, and Land Committee met to discuss ONCA 24-52, an act to amend ONCA 23-105 to provide a supplemental appropriation to the Community Development Financial Institution Board in the amount of $10,423 and to establish an alternate effective date Second Speaker Shaw is the sponsor. The final committee action was due pass, voting yes. Rebard Hamilton, Rebard Hamilton, Tillman, Keene, and Stabler. Congresswoman Lemon was not present yesterday. And that's all I have this morning, Speaker. Thank you. <clears throat> we are now on general order day one, second reading. Congresswoman Rebard.
Thank you, Speaker. Reading ONCA 24-50, an act to amend ONCA 22-28 to include all pre-construction activities for the Heritage Center as part of the appropriation and to establish an alternate effective date. Thank you. Congresswoman Shaw. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Good morning, everyone. Reading ONCA 2451, an act authorized and appropriate $250,000 to the Office of the Attorney General for professional fees and to establish an alternate effective date. Thank you. Thank you. We are now on general order day two where amendments may be proposed. Without objection, I've spoken to the majority of Congress members and I want to save some time. Um, ONCA 2432, ONCA 2433, ONCA 2435, ONCA 2436, ONCA 2440, ONCA 2449, ONCR 2415, and ONCR 2416 will advance to third reading on the next session agenda as no one has amendments. We are still on general order day two. ONCA 2441, an act to amend ONCA 2385 to provide a supplemental appropriation to the cultural donations for the Blackwell Frazier American Legion Post 142 in the amount of $40,000 and to establish an alternate effective date. The sponsor is Congressman Maker. Are there any amendments to be proposed? Congressman Maker. Congressman, can you turn your mic on, please? Thank you, Madam Speaker. Yes, I do have an amendment to that bill. After post 142, insert of Hominy, Oklahoma. Thank you. Second. There is a motion and a second. Can you provide your page in line, please? Uh, yeah, excuse me. Uh, page one, line 17. Thank you. Does the clerk have your amendment? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, we are now at interview of appointees. We are now at interview of appointees. Galen Crum, Osage LLC. Mr. Crum, you have the floor. Um, we have been allowing for any opening statements, and then I will um, allow for the members to be recognized with any questions, and we'll go from there. So you have the floor for an opening statement. Okay. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you to all the Congress folks here today uh, for. Uh, bringing us in to, to uh, be considered. Uh, one of the things that uh, uh, I thought of yesterday uh, as to the, the method that we've been using, as, as you know, we've been interim appointees, so we've been working uh, you know, on the Osage LLC for several months. But one of the things that uh, I uh, didn't stress enough, I think, uh, yesterday perhaps was the methodology we use or have been using to make decisions there. Uh, <clears throat> we have a good staff, we have a good CFO, we have a good CEO, uh, we have a good attorney uh, that has all on board when we came there. And when we, like when we were working on getting the ranch lease done and the agreement for the broadband, uh, all the different aspects that as we developed them and were trying to work the agreements, we would, we would uh, send them through that, that staff. The uh, uh, CFO and the, and the CEO would uh, look them over, send them to the uh, uh, attorneys. Lots of times they would come back, red lines and that sort of thing. We would then communicate our, uh, the problems we had found with it uh, with whatever was being proposed at the moment, and then the same process happened on the other side. Attorney General would would, would work it. The uh, uh, we were done through the assistant chief. He was one designated to to uh, deal with us, and uh, so that's how the the process worked to do those. And that's pretty much the process for everything that we're doing. We we get a a, a report 
uh, from our, our management team, yay or nay, give us the ups and downs. You know, the attorneys always <clears throat> may say it's an okay deal, but they want to point out the downside so that we understand. You, you guys know how the attorneys will, you know, do their services for us. And uh, uh, we make our decisions based on, on uh, those reports on a lot of times. Uh, well, always, I guess. Uh, I've, uh, I've been, uh, when we first started with the interim appointment, we had several things that was, uh, I felt of urgent need, and that was the ranch was about to be dissolved in 90 days because the previous board had given the, the lease back. So we were starting off with a, with a lease uh, that no longer existed after 90 days, and uh, uh, we worked to try and develop a new one that would serve the Osage people, uh, we felt, in the best way possible. And I think we, we got there uh, as, as best as what we could, and w dealing with the, also the, the uh, wishes of the executive branch. Uh, so we got there on that one. The, the broadband one, which was also pretty much dead in the water as far as the cooperation between the two, <laughs> was a little easier because we had the template of their original MOU basis, I think is how it was operating before, to develop the, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the way that the, the two entities would work to, to bring the broadband to, to fruition and then operate it on into the future. So we had a, a pretty good uh, template there to work with, and all we had to give, do was do the cooperation and talking and working things out to get back to that point. So that's, those are two things that I'm proud of that we were able to do uh, in our first few months there. And uh, uh, within our staff, we've also been able to, to uh, mm, I want to say, uh, not micromanage so much like our CEO and, and, and that sort of thing. Uh, where he was able to make decisions quickly, uh, communicate them to him what he was what he wanted us to do, and then we were able to let him let him proceed. And I, I guess from talking to him that that wasn't always the case. That the things would get held up for a while. But uh, my in my training and in, in, in management of, of people for for many years the fire service and, uh, and ranching and, and everything that I've ever been involved in, I always felt that, that uh, you put people in charge of something, you make sure they know what they're doing, and then you don't have to, to micromanage them. You know, you can, you can trust them to go forward, and if you can't, you get different people. You know, you, you, you train them, you write them up if you necessary, uh, do the, the discipline, but to develop the kind of the kind of team that can can uh, do what you're asking them to do, and I think we have that there, uh, and uh, so I'm proud of that. I'm not sure. I've never had to do one of these confirmations to us. I don't want you to want to hear from me, but I'll be a uh, happy to to uh, answer any questions you might have. Thank you, Congress members. You have the ability to ask questions, Congresswoman Stabler. Yes, thank you. Um, what is your position on the board at this time? I am currently serving as the chairman. Okay, and in this time as chairman, can you tell us how any business opportunities that have come forward that are any new business opportunities that come forward in the last six months? Uh, yes, actually, uh, you know, uh, of course, the business that we finally get started with with the with the broadband is huge. Oh, that's existing, but, yeah. right? Uh, but within, <clears throat> as you as you well know, within the the uh, Osage LLC structure, there's several companies that are operating. Some of them are just uh, companies in name only; they are not doing any business. Most of the things that we're going through right now are with OPDG and ones. Uh, are the, are the two that are doing the most uh, work. And uh, we've been able to enter in a couple of new things with ones. One of them would be an extenuation of, of more contracts that were similar to what we had before. Uh, 
just last week, uh, the CEO had come across a, uh, had been approached by actually another uh, 8A company who find uh, uh, partners for, for people who are already doing business. And uh, this lady's based out of, out of Washington. I'm trying to think of the name of the company right now. I'll, I'll get it in a It's, uh, you know, an abbreviation of like, uh, 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 uh. anyway, I'll go ahead and tell you about the company. Uh, when we first approached her, she had some, some work that, that uh, we could have done, we hoped, right away. It was, it was a, 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 somebody she was representing that needed a, a new 8A partner. And uh, uh, it would have been very lucrative, but, but they, uh, they actually, we missed on that particular contract, but she has a bunch of others, and we've entered into agreement with her to try and have her present those. And one of the things that will, most exciting to me about it, was w within the, the clientele that she has that she's representing, uh, we would be, we would uh, get approval to do secret classified uh, work. Uh, by that I mean, you know, it, it probably in bases that are, you know, uh, government bases that are doing classified work, but we would have the approval then to, to do that. By, by signing with her that, w that we would get the approval to be able to handle uh, that other aspect of, of government work where there was where there were uh, uh, secret classifications we've uh, uh, of course entered into our normal ranching stuff that we were able to do even while we were doing the transitions uh, <clears throat> the uh, we've been trying to get more staff on board, which is not new opportunities, but it will create new opportunities. We, we were, uh, we've been interviewing for uh, a position whereby that they would be largely the, a recruiter of new businesses. We've, they, we, we've interviewed several people, have not settled on anybody. We've also, I hope, I, I should have asked this morning, I hope we made an offer for a person that, that would uh, come into the office down there and be a, an office manager and, uh, and help with personnel issues uh, to try to take the, the load off. You know, we only have one person actually in the office and then we have, have Bourbon uh, working that, that, you know, help assist with them and goes along that way. So we've been trying to add some more staff. We also are interviewing for somebody to uh, 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 be the, uh, our liaison, you might say, with on this uh, broadband uh, build out. Because you know, as, as you well know, there's a millions and millions of dollars being involved there. Even though we have a partner with Atlink that is uh, conducting that, then nobody within OIS, the company that is doing the broadband, uh, uh, was directly reporting to the, to the board. And I felt, and the rest of the board felt, that, that we're past due getting somebody there that will uh, be able to do that, that work for us, you know, oversee the, the operation as it goes, keep us informed if any problems that might come up. Part of our, our uh, uh, agreement with the broadband uh, initiative is that we, uh, uh, we meet with them uh, on a regular basis with, with their, they already had people who's doing staff meetings and when I, we have people uh, uh, involved in them, largely, largely bourbon at this time, but we wanted somebody that was actually paid to do that particular job to, uh, to see that, that that's going on in a proper fashion and building out that. So we've been trying to add, you know, build out some, some uh, uh, personnel. My understanding is that a lot of personnel has come and gone over the years, the few years, uh, for whatever reason. But positions that were failed or was about to be filled, they, you know, they weren't able to consummate the, the uh, uh, agreement. Okay, so one, one company you worked with. That was the question, what new, what new businesses have you been working with? So we got that. It's evidently some defense contracts. 
Um, yesterday, you, if I could continue, Speaker, yesterday uh, you gave us some totals on the herd at the ranch. Do you recall what you told us was the when you when you were on the board before the old board was there? How many cattle? How many head of cattle were on the ranch at that time? Well, breeding stock is, is what I was talking about, and I don't recall for sure whether the number I'm going to tell you was bulls and and cows together, but it was about 2,300 okay. that were that were ranch owned. Okay, and then do you recall what you told us was on the ranch at this time? No, I think I turned around and had and we we get a report on that all the time. I think I think there's like 1,400 something like that, but, but I don't have that in front of me. But we I can. Look it up on my computer if you well, want. Well, I checked in your financials and checked with your your finance person, and um, the the statement that I want to refer to now is the statement that you made that all the cattle had been sold off, or a bunch of the cattle had been sold off. I know all of them didn't get sold off, but right. a bunch of them got sold off, and so the uh, the count on the herd uh, in September 22, which was the first time they did a account after you all left oh. was 1,620 and the current counts 1,509 and so um, I just wondered you know I don't understand your 1,600 the, fit, the, 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 the number that you read off for now is you know sounds proper okay. for what it was okay. but we had far more cattle than that at, okay. at the end of the 22 now we had at, at that point though we had, and that was, I, mean, I should back up a little bit. As you do, you know, wean off calves, test your cows for, uh, you know, for being pregnant or not. And then at that point on that, on that particular time, we had uh, culled cattle off of, you know, from the uh, uh, spring cabin herd. And we, and we culled pretty deep that year in terms of trying to get rid of some of the older cows. And uh, our intention, of course, was to replace them back. Now, I don't know how many cows we culled that time, but, but in between the times when you're doing your culling and you're able to replace them, that number will vary. But what the number I'm talking about was what we considered our, our constant herd, and we would have to buy back up to that all the time. Okay. And actually, we were looking to add on during that, that winter that uh, uh, we were the consultants. We had the money set aside to buy more fall calvers, and I pitched the deal to the then board. We were going to buy uh, 155 head and put them uh, on the remaining Oxley ground that we were not using for fall calves, and that would have filled up the, that area. And uh, they didn't want to uh, do that. So we, you know, we we, we had a lot of cash on hand when we turned that over that we were wanting to add back to the herd or, or replace the spring calvers and add on to the falls. And uh, that may not have happened at that point, maybe where some of those discrepancies come from. Okay. Well, that came from the reconciliation of your finance people, and that's where I got it. So um, then lastly, um, and I don't think I have the date on this one, but there was a um, time when there was uh, some cattle stolen on the ranch. And uh, can you recall what the count was on that? No, I, I don't know the count. I know that at times we suspected some cattle had been stolen. We've actually you know, before I even come on the, the first time on my term on the ranch board, they would find cattle dragging a rope once in a while. And uh, we did have a, a uh, suspicion of some cattle being stolen that uh, uh, we thought maybe that it would come out of a pasture on, over on the west side where nobody lives too much. And our cattle, of course, come to a truck very well you know, to, to honk in a horn in a, in a feed truck because we suck them and we feed them. And uh, uh, as I recall, what we thought we had missed at that time, and, I, and while we were still around on the board, I don't think we, we confirmed them. We turned them in as possible and turned them into the, to the uh, livestock uh, uh, investigator for this area. 
uh, theft investigator, and we turned him in. We, we informed the, the uh, we'll say, nation police that we thought maybe we were having some, some activity out there. But it seemed like it was what we would have attributed to a good trailer load, like maybe they'd backed up next to a fence, uh, uh, sucked them up there, put some cake from the from the uh, on the ground into the trailer, and then shift in what they got. Because one of the reasons we thought they were perhaps stolen was because we weren't we weren't missing cows and calves. We were mixing a, a missing a mixture of you know had some some calves that didn't have a mama with them and and, and that sort of thing. So, but I but the the numbers from three years ago I can't I don't recall exactly. Okay, all right. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Any other member? Congresswoman Shaw and Congresswoman Lemon. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, so we all talk about our economic development. We know that we need it. We know that in order to continue to provide services to our members, increase services to our members, economic development is extremely important. So therefore, the folks that we place on this board uh, it's very important. It's very important that the business acumen is there in order to be able to take us to that next level. I know that, you know, at times we've all been frustrated that maybe there isn't as much movement over the years that we would like there to be enough, as much growth. Do you feel like you can provide that leadership and provide that growth to uh, not not just the ranch because I absolutely am am there with you as far as your ranch experience. But from a business standpoint, tell me why and how you're going to help make that happen. All right. Well, as I kind of alluded to when I started off, uh, we have a good we have a good team. That, that had been hired not by us but by the you know by the previous board and put together on it that, that are working now for it and been coming back for to, our, to it I believe that that our I guess I'm doing me now my management style uh, allows those people to, to work and to, and we encourage them to get out and do the, the start. we have a a uh, actually have a uh, uh, bonus structure that was not filled out the very best but when we got here but we had to deal with it some we're back whereby uh people are uh gauged by what they're doing uh part of that is to recruit new members or new businesses uh especially the one the lady managing the uh the ones uh she 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 re receives a bonus as to whether she makes the the uh, uh, not only on performing on the ones uh, contracts but on getting new ones, and we are constantly uh, out there searching for new contracts and and, and going. So, uh, my understanding of the of the board, we, we of course are going to do. You know whatever is, is required for instance on the 18th I'll be sitting on a, a on a uh, uh, panel uh, for Tulsa uh, Chamber of Commerce that they're putting on for Indian Nations uh, uh, economic development uh, and so you know I'll be I'll be there trying to do what I can to uh, to bring forward whatever contacts we can make with that of course, we'll be we'll be sitting on a panel with, with the Cherokees and the Choctaws and some of them that have vast funds. You know, we'll be talking about what we're doing, but our our, our uh, uh, admittedly our development is in infancy compared to what theirs is in terms of economic development and the funds they're able to, to funnel at them. But I, I'm 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 proud of what we're doing, uh, and I and I want to to make that uh, grow. And, and to facilitate our people to, to get out and, and hustle the, the stuff to go. And uh, as an oversight board, uh, I think it's important for us to be, to give the, the uh, uh, give the staff we have and the, and the recruiters we have the, the way to get out and do the recruiting. 
and, and the funds and to find the right people to do that. And like I say, we're trying to add more people on that are, their job is recruitment. And that's been a, a, a tough, uh, tough road to hoe right now to getting the right people. A lot, a lot of people with those skills are in demand for not just us. So we're having to compete with other, other companies to get them in. But we've interviewed several different times in the times that I've been there to, to recruit the, the proper uh, uh, folks that can do that recruitment. Congresswoman Lemon. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. Good morning, Mr. Crum. Good morning. Thank you for being here with us today. Um, could you tell me, tell us, Mr. Crum, uh, piggybacking off of what Congresswoman, um, our second speaker, Shaw, mentioned um, about other business uh, experiences that you might have that would lend to the, well, let me just back up a minute. You're here for an interview, and I feel like it's a job interview. That's what I feel like. I don't know about anybody else here, but I feel like we're asked to do a job interview, and the job description isn't really defined in a way that would normally come from the HR department. Um, so we're asked to make decisions. Um, you know, this is just part of our process. So I feel like this is a, is a job interview, and in essence, for us to, for them personally to take back and take time to say, does this person meet all of the needs that there that we require as a nation and as a business arm to take us forward and so what piggybacking off what congress second speaker shaw said all of our businesses that we have currently at osage llc can you tell me which business that you are a subject matter expert in in the current businesses that we have Uh, are the current businesses that, that, that where we're providing services for uh, the, the current businesses that Osage LLC currently operates. I would not. I, I was, you know, I worked construction at different times. That's sort of thing. So I have a little bit of background of what like ones is doing with the, you know, Fort Campbell with their work, that sort of thing. But no, I'm not an expert on on uh, any of them. I'm becoming much more adept at at uh, learning about the broadband and, and that thing sort of thing going forward. But uh, as far as my experience from the past, I've I've been a a. Uh, uh, chairman of the board or chairman of the of the uh, the committees on many different areas uh, in my life. Uh, lots of it revolved around agriculture, uh, you know, uh, horse breeds and that sort of thing. Uh, finance with 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 being uh, the chairman of the board for the government finance or. Uh, or state financed uh, Farmers Relief Association for many years, where we bought insurance uh, uh, packages for our for the uh, members, and uh, both that were geared for investment and, and growth, and for just the basic uh, life insurance, you know, aspect of them. And we uh, would interview, you know, many people and 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 work out different plans that we could use. That we were you know, using hundreds of thousands of dollars of state funds to do that with. I've served on the, the uh, board of directors of a, of a credit union for uh, several years. I, 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 I generally say like 10 or 12, but I don't remember how many it was, it was at least that many. Uh, and in that, I actually had some experience that we're going through right now with the audit. By the way, our audit appears to be going well. But of course, the, uh, our credit union is audited like FDIC audit every year. So we, so I had some experience with being. It was not FDIC, but when I say that, it's the the uh, credit union uh, side of that. Same same sort of audit. I did that. I used them as just an example that you would understand. Uh, and you know, dealing with the findings, dealing with with what they would might come back with, and how we would fix them. That sort of thing. So I'm uh, I'm anxious to see how how this audit goes. It's going it's going much quicker. I understand than they did before. Probably uh, a lot of it because some of the business had never been audited before, if I understand right. Last year, so, so that's just what I was told. That some of them up until up until that time they they hadn't been properly audited. I don't know that. I was just told by our people that that was it. So it took a long time. I understand they didn't get done until like July. 
and uh, the same company is doing the work this year. And we've been, uh, of course, they've been coming back with this with uh, uh, sample requests, just like, in, you know, under my uh, leadership on the on the uh, credit union. Uh, and we've been providing those, and they told us that that uh, uh, the latest uh, con uh, communication with us, they thought they'd be done this month. So uh, I have experience in that sort of thing. I've always had to. You know, everything I did in terms of the cow business or horse business or anything else, you had to look for, for business opportunities and, and, and weigh uh, profit and loss kind of uh, potential. And so I, I do have a, you know, some experience that way, I guess. May I continue, Madam Speaker? Yes, and I, I want to let the body know um, it's 1035. I'm not trying to rush anyone, but we have two more people for interview. We can place another interview on the agenda if the body so desires, and we also have an IFS meeting. But <clears throat> continue. Thank you, Madam Speaker, for that um, heads up. I appreciate it. I'll try to make my questions not so open-ended. You mentioned um, finance, being on the credit un union um, as an experience, and um, I'm looking for experience. And I know that during um, the committee meeting that you that I voiced that I didn't feel at this point in time that the experience was there. And so I want to go back and talk about some experience. However, I do want to start with, um, will we be seeing a dividend um, based on your financial um, experience with the finances that we have currently? Um, will we be receiving a dividend based on a dividend plan that's outlined in your articles of operation for Osage LLC? Yes. Yesterday we presented uh, actually with it with the material that we we did. We we the uh, uh, our CFO had prepared uh, as part of our presentation yesterday, uh, and I'd, I'd have to bring it up on my computer. But but we were projecting a four hundred and thirty some thousand dollar dividend. I think was what we were projecting at this point. Uh, in the you know mid year, for what we would be offering or uh, dispersing next fall. Okay, great. And may I continue? Continue. Thank you. So um, you were a prior ranch board member. The ranch board was dissolved and placed under Osage LLC. Then you got. Then you became a ranch um, subject matter somewhat expert in ranching as an advisor for the transition piece to help o Osage LLC. Um, transition to the dissolution of the ranch board and then taking on the ranch. Um, can you tell uh, how long did you were you an advisor and and when was that um, partnership with the Osage LLC board um, dissolved for okay. you? Okay, we uh, there was a little bit of paper, paperwork in in uh, October before the that actual dissolving of the Osage ranch occurred. It was it was only a few weeks I think into October we were actually uh, approved uh, as the Osage uh, uh, Ranch Board uh, in the in the uh, f fall session, but then because it was realized I think at the toward the end when he wasn't even going to you know interview us or, or do it that if he didn't have a ranch board we were getting ready to sell calves in in October. That was the spring calf normal time that, that we, you need the ranch board to be able to sign off on those sales. So that's a long expect to say it was mid -mar mid uh, October. We were terminated, I guess you could say, by means of a email in June, shortly after the elections. I can't tell you right. I could look it up, but I don't know the exact day because I'd worked the elections and <laughs> come down with the COVID right afterwards, you know, on the, on the June stuff. By working, I mean, I, I helped with the Minerals Council part of the election. And uh, uh, we received a, a, an email saying that, that you know, uh, we weren't being terminated for cause, but we just weren't needed anymore. And that was the, that was the uh, extent of how we were we were terminated. That's the first time in my life I'd ever been fired, so I didn't know whether that's the normal way of doing it without talking to anybody or not. I know it wasn't the normal way. I fired a lot of people in my time, but that wasn't the normal way we did it. 
And we weren't even paid for the last month. That was, it was mid-month sometime. It was like, it was after the elections, a week or so after the elections. Long enough for me to get sick. So you were an advisor for, not, um, for close to eight months. Um, you and the other two and gentlemen were an advisor in a transitional period for, for eight months, um, is what my calculation would be if that you were in correct. October and then to June. And so in your, um, when you were chairman of the board, which that's what you were with the, when you were at the Osage um, Ranch Board. This is my uh, last position, yes. Okay, thank you. Um, was, I'm gonna talk about the CARES cattle. Did y'all have a contract, a binding contract with the, uh, the executive branch when you accepted the CARES cattle? And, I mean, just yes or no. And, and did you take board action in your board minutes um, saying that you have a contract, that it's being signed and negotiated, and or on an acceptance date when you would accept the cattle? And then, um, yeah, so did you have a contract with the nation um, concerning the care for the CARES cattle because they were not assets of the ranch, they were assets of the nation? I was actually involved in, in all the CARES, CAC, or CARES uh, funding that we, we did that summer. All the fences we built, everything that we did. I actually bought the cattle. In terms of I, I was the one that found the cattle for them. And and uh, we worked with them, telling them what we you know what we were finding the pastures we could go to. Uh, we were we had been the ranch had been given an amount of money to uh, uh, spend on CARES Act stuff. And uh, of course, if you recall, all of that had to be uh, spent before the first of the next year, and then that got it, that got uh, amended. So we were the ones as the ranch that was uh, and in cooperation with the, with, the, uh, with the executive branch decided that, that part of what we could spend that money on was cattle. And it was, and it was originally thought that it wouldn't need to have any other uh, legal designation on it, that it would, they could just be part of the, the ranch cattle being brought in. But as the lawyers got more involved with it, they said that wouldn't be a very good idea because of the, the uh, re requirements for CARES Act to be implemented. So we purchased the cattle. By we, I mean the, the ranch uh, wrote the checks out of, the, out of us or we, we uh, asked for drawdowns from uh, the, the people that was running the CARES Act stuff. Part of, part of what we did that time, we wrote checks for part of it, we got the, the nation to write it. And I can't tell you whether the nation wrote the check for the, for the CARES Act cattle or not. They were bought in a couple of different pieces. And, uh, uh, you know, recalling from this time away. As far as an agreement that we had, we had an MOU with them that said that, that when we realized that they had to be separated out, we had an MOU with the executive branch that said basically, uh, it was a little more involved than this, but it said basically that, that we would, we would uh, uh, manage these cattle, look after them, and, and, the, and the proceeds could, could come to whatever mechanism. I, I assume uh, the, uh, we were dealing with the uh, 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 environmental group, the <laughs> Uh, dealing, dealing with Jan and her group on, on uh, what we were doing with them, or, you know, where we were putting them, that sort of thing. But the, but the agreement said that, that we would do that as long as the ranch was never losing any money to, to manage those cattle for them. Okay, so, so that was the extent of a, of a contract. So no written, documented contract. It was just a verbal agreement? It was a, we, had a, we had a written MOU. You had a written MOU to, for, to, for you all to assume the care of the cattle with no capital infusion. A written MOU to say that this is how the cattle are going to be taken care of and executive branch is going to be, give you this money to help take care for those cattle after the lawyers decided. No. So no contract. At, at no point did we, we expect the, the executive branch to give us any money. We were going to operate them. We would we would sell their calves. We would provide cattle for the for the uh, butcher house. Oh, that's another but, question. So, did you the, have a contract with the butcher house to pro provide cattle for them also? Because we ended up in a situation where it was he said, she said. They said that the cattle were too fat. The cattle were pregnant. The cattle were too thin. We weren't getting enough. So, did you have a binding contract with the butcher house? 
to supply them with um, beef for food sovereignty? No, we just had an agreement on, okay. on, on uh, the pricing for the cattle that we sent there. And we, and we started, the, the, the CARES Act cattle, during that first year, there weren't any of them to send to the butcher house. We started uh, a pipeline of calves before the concrete was even poured at the butcher house, because we'd, we'd bought into this food sovereignty and tried to make these, these uh, entities that we were spending all this money on with CARES Act to work. And so we, we knew we were going to sell them to them and uh, had an agreement to sell these fat cattle that we had fattened up for them to be able to start working uh, the butcher house. We were going to uh, uh, sell them for the going market rate at, at Oklahoma uh, stockyards. Okay, thank you. So um, on that, the, that, that goes for our call cows too that we sent there. Okay, thank you. So on the broadband lease that was just recently executed, um, from the time that you were put, placed on the board and then it took about six months to get that executed. Is it fair to say that it's the same broadband lease that was presented to executive or fairly close to the same broadband lease that was presented to executive a year ago that um, did not get signed? And speaking from your um, interview packet, would it be fair to say that the reason it didn't happen is because of ego and petty grievances that you listed here in your um, interview packet as to why that contract wasn't signed and the ranch lease contract wasn't signed. But first, just yes or no, is the is the broadband lease currently that has been signed, is it similar or very close to or the same exact lease that was proposed a year ago? And you may not know that, but I just want to know if that's a possibility because we can find out from prior board members if it was or wasn't the same exact lease that was finally negotiated and signed by the executive branch. The short answer would be yes, but that you need to have some I need to give some Thank more you. context to it. That it, it may be close, but it's not nearly as involved as what the what the original. It was kind of an MOU they had with them before, if I understand right. It was I don't know whether it was signed or whatever, but I know everything had stopped and nobody was talking to anybody, and that uh, even for like our part of it at uh, Bowery, uh, we had to. We had to make agreements because we couldn't, when I say we, the uh, previous board, the royal we, I guess there, had to make agreements with AT&T to uh, be able to uh, use their system to start actually operating up at Bowering because there was a tit for tat of some sort. I didn't ever try to get back with it. You know, somebody pulled the card and then somebody else cut them off from the cable. I, I didn't try to get into that, you know, how those happened. I don't now that we're operating in cooperation and doing them. Uh, so, so the answer is well, yes. Yes, Thank and, you. And, and let me expand just a little bit more. How I know that is because uh, Rick Perrier, one of our previous board members, one of the first things I asked him when we got the, the uh, proposal from the executive branch was, is this something that, that uh, meets the spirit and the idea that you guys were trying to work with the first time? And he come back and said, yes, it does. So I'm, re I'm relying on Rick's uh, uh, expertise on how it did the first time to tell you that, yes, it, it is very similar. Because uh, that was my question right off the bat before we even talked anymore. Did this uh, meet the spirit and the intent of what you guys were trying to do the first time with the, with the nation? Mr. Crum, thank you very much. We are, we're going to move on. We're going to, members, we've got two other folks and like I said we can have another interview but I want to get the other two gentlemen that are here today to be interviewed at the podium. Mr. Crum, thank you for your time. Thank you Madam Speaker. Hank Hainzinger, Osage LLC. Mr. Hainzinger, you may come to the podium and, and uh, address the body of Congress and then I'll open it up for questions. Uh, good morning, folks. Uh, my name's Hank Hainsinger, and uh, you've all got my resume and probably read it, so you can, I'll, I'm ready to go. It's another great day in the Osage. Members of Congress, any questions? Congresswoman Stabler. Thank you. Um, good morning. 
Good morning. Um, can you tell us what your position is on the on the uh, LLC board at this time? Co-chair at this time. So, uh, yeah, I mean. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. If I can continue, um, under the uh, uh, under the LLC, we have numerous companies. Um, and then the LLC was was moved under there. Can you give us your opinion of the current structure and any changes that you would like to make to that current structure? You know, we've got we've got really good people. You know, we with our CFO and our CEO, and the things the things that I really see that we've got things really work going forward with the broadband. I mean, things is going to work forward in that. We've got the uh, the ranch lease signed, and the ranch that's that's a good solid deal. You know, we'll make a generational ranch. What our dream was about the whole people, the whole Osage Nation people was wanting to make a generational ranch. We've got that firmed up. We've got the uh, the wind shape and the Skyway 36 thing. You know, when all that comes together, it'll domino. It's taken some time. That's been working. I remember when Mr. Redcorn was sitting here as a as a Congress member talking about about that, and then as, as assistant chief with the Skyway thing. So it's taken some time for that thing to come together, but it's going to come together, and it'll domino if we can just stay with it and and make it uh, and not quit it, you know. So with the wind shape stuff and uh, and the Skyway thing, yeah, there's there's lots of good things. There's lots of good things that can happen. So with um, with all of that, at different times in board meetings and, and different comments from different board members, we've heard that you're wanting to move the ranch out from under the LLC. Is that your opinion as well? or? You know, the ranch, the people in the ag world takes care, you know, they, you know, it's not normally, you know, people make good decisions. They are, uh, oh, I guess you'd say, uh, most of them are self-made and you know they make wise decisions they uh they think about what's you know what would be good for the ranch and the only thing that i think would be good for the ranch was to be off by itself while it was doing its stuff but the ranch is 60 plus percent of the llc so at at this time so i mean it's it's making some of the money so i don't think it would it wouldn't go well right now under out from underneath it so any other member? Congresswoman Lemon. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Hainzinger. Good morning. So, um, <clears throat> did the did you guys recently purchase cattle um, for the ranch? We, was there, I, was there, was since, there a recent? Since, since I've been since I've been on the interim deal, we haven't purchased or sold anything. You don't purchase. We sold, we sold a few bulls that didn't pass their semen test the other day. Um, I think there were seven or eight bulls we sold, but we haven't purchased any cattle while I've been there. Okay. And um, in your interview packet here, um, you mentioned, I'm just going to read from it if you don't mind. Um, we were in the midst of COVID and, COVID and the ranch board made a decision to make food sovereignty a priority. We worked closely with the newly established butcher house meats and with OSU to set up a feedlot to provide the butcher house with up to 50 head of cattle per month. Mr. Hensinger, did you all have a binding contract with the butcher house to provide them 50 head of cattle per month? No. Okay. And, I mean, you... all of that was all young stuff and we was trying to be geared up. You can't gear up cattle in, you can't, you know, it takes time to gear that so up. Says... So we was being ready for that. And it also says here that we bought a walk-in freezer for food storage during COVID when meat was scarce at the grocery store. We wanted to make sure we could store and provide meat to tribal members in the event of emergency. Is that currently being done? Is, is it, there meat currently in that freezer to, to provide for tribal members? You know, I don't know if there's any, any meat in there currently, but since we've got the butcher house, but we got that built before they was building on the butcher house. They was, you know, how long a project did that take to build? Well, we needed something soon because we had, we had, uh, you know, injured cattle, uh, things that was ready to be processed, and we needed a place to put them. And you didn't want to waste the waste the product, so we bought a small walk-in freezer that was that was being was able to put in and 
half the time that uh, or you know it took only like three weeks to, or four weeks to get it well we was able to put meat in there and save when we'd have something a, a salvage animal like a bull or a, a cow or something or a calf when we was loading them and he broke a leg you know you don't want to just for one you can't take them to the sale and sell them you can but you take you know they'll give you 20 cents a pound for him you can harvest him and salvage the product yourself and that was our idea and that way we would have it and we was also giving meat to each one of the districts every year before that and we would have it for that thank you mr hansiger is the is the bison herd that we have um the ranch cares for the bison herd correct the ranch hands that we have, the foreman, he's the, no. Who cares for the bison herd today? The Department of Natural Resources. The DNR. When you were there, the ranch took care of the bison herd, correct? Yes, ma'am. Did you have a binding contract with the nation to take care of the bison herd um, so that it, what, they would not be a liability on your financials? <coughs> That was part of the agreement with the ranch, with the first 25-year ranch lease that we that was turned back that we don't have. That was part of the agreement. But that that that's that's gone. Yes, it is now. That's all I have for now. Thank you. Thank you. Any other member? Congresswoman Rivard. Thank you, Speaker. Hi, Mr. Hank Singer. Good morning. Good morning. My um, question will be quick. I'm I'm more concerned about of, of all the assets that we had under the LLC was the Lost Creek Ranch, and I was just wondering. Um, it sounds as though, and you can correct me, that that wasn't such a priority. It was given to the uh, the chief gave it to the LLC to manage. And there was appropriations made as well. So I was wondering, during your since you've been uh, as an interim board member, the uh, rent or the Lost Creek has now been given back to the executive branch. Could you uh, speak to why the Lost Creek wasn't a priority you while you were on the or while you are I, serving as an interim board member? I can't speak to what happened there. But I can say is we, or when I came in in October, the, the lease had already been given back to the, and we had one meeting and then it was 30 days and then we was out, or the, the lease was over with. Like on November the 1st, and we came in or maybe it was October, I can't remember, but we didn't have, it never was brought up to us about what, what, the, what the previous <laughs> LLC had talked about doing with the, with the Lost Creek. <laughs> and, and like I said, it was, it was over with. It was, the lease had already been terminated or give back by the time we kind of took, by the time we came in to working. Is that right? I mean, is that is that what you wanted to hear? Uh, well, no, I'm I mean, not I asking think you that for what I want to hear. Things need to be done to it. <laughs> yeah. But. Okay. I was just wondering why. Um, my concern, and I'll keep saying it until somebody puts a nail in it, is that the Lost Creek property that we purchased was a, an asset being managed by the LLC, and you're saying that the lease at the time when you took. Uh, well, after, when you were sworn in, you're saying soon soon after the lease wasn't part of. Soon, soon after we we came, the lease had already been gave, okay. given back. Okay. And, you know, the lease was already the lease had termed out. I guess termed out or given back or however that works. I don't know. But yeah, I mean we we personally did never did ever try to have anything to do with any of that before that was all before us okay and the and the giving the lease back yes yeah that wasn't in our votes in any of ours but you did did you guys participate in, in in transferring the asset or not transferring the actual asset but the management back to the executive branch 
I have no recall, and I don't think my name was stamped on any of that. Okay, thank you, sir. Congresswoman Redcorn. Thank you, Speaker. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I see in the report that you all sent us that you're, you've discussed, you know, the lower net income for the ranch this year is partially due to the contract delays. And so that aside, what is the new projected lease income for the ranch, like on an annual basis? Like what, of the leases that you all have, hunting leases, pasture leases, all those things, because I'm looking at the previous 24 to 26 budget forecast that we'd been given last year. And I know that that was based on an old contract and I know all that. So now I heard yesterday that there's new lease income that you all will earn. What is that now? I don't know to the dollar amount. I mean, I can get that easy enough. I mean, it's, it's all easy enough to get the, uh, the cow contract. Uh, it's pretty rock solid. I don't. I, it's not. I don't have that to the dollar amount, but it's it's easy enough to get. The cattle, the cow calf income is going to be, uh, you know, less calves to sell. Um, but with the price of being pretty steady as they are, which is forecasted to stay pretty good for a while, um, you know, the calf the the calf sales will be good. But like I said, you know, it, it would have been a whole lot different if we'd have been selling. 850 calves versus 600 calves, you know, uh, so, but I can get that, that break. If you want the exact dollar, cause once the leases, once the leases are taken care of the grass leases, you know, that's a rock solid number. Mm -hmm. No, no ups, no downs, no change just set from year to year when you release them. But, but you know, the, the lease, the lease market also works like a cattle market. I mean, grass is a commodity. It's a harvested product. And if the cattle market's good, the grass market will be good. If the cattle market's low, the grass will be obviously cheaper. So, I mean, a guy can't hardly forecast himself on, you know, well, we're gonna get $40 an acre for our grass this year. Well, then calves turn around and they're worth 80 cents a pound when it's costing a dollar twenty to produce them, you're not going to get forty dollars an acre this year. You, you know. So I mean, so the market is with everything is a market. You know, you got to follow your commodity markets. May I continue? Continue, please. So on that conversation point, and you made the comment a while ago that the ranch is currently sixty percent of the LLC's business, and I don't disagree with you, but. We have a, we're, you know, there's a fence line. We only have so many acres. The ranch is only so big. We can only have so many cattle on it. And you just said the same thing, you know, cattle prices and grass prices, all those things will fluctuate. The market's gonna differ. The, I know that there's probably some ability for the ranch to grow, mm -hmm. but I don't feel like we can hang our hats on the ranch being our primary money maker for our LLC. It can be a very stable income within our business. So my question to you, because you're being tasked with putting on being put on this board that's managing multiple business streams, multiple income streams that vary vastly, lots of lots of variety, which is great. How are we or how are you all as the board planning to grow that other forty percent of our businesses that I will hope eventually surpass what the ranch is producing and grow us because well there's there's nothing more than than me wanting to to keep the ranch as a generational thing for all of our people to love from now on and uh, but as far as growing other things i really think the wind shape is going to come around and be a good be a good stream i mean because you know you're taking a little bit of of military you're taking a little bit of technology and you're taking a little bit of the new the new wave of stuff with the drones and putting them all together in one place and you've got Skyway 36 you know you've got the testing of the of the drones and you've got P, the OSU you've got OSU involved you know so i really think that that's going to become a big thing if we if we everybody can stay hooked and 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 work work together and that's one thing that we all need to do as a nation is all work together and get on the same page thank you i'm done congresswoman stabler 
I just have uh, one question. Um, yeah, going back to the CARES cattle, can you tell us why the CARES cattle were commingled in with the ranch cattle? They wasn't ever commingled in. They was all branded on the left, on the on the offside, on the rib cage. They was in their own. They was in separate pastures. Um, I mean, they they was never commingled in. The, they was even ear tag different. We had different ear tags for them. So, I mean, we had the deal set up for all of that to work right, but I don't know where it went south, but somebody said that it didn't line up on the books, but we had, those cattle was going to, we was going to have the butcher house set up to where they would have beef a rolling you know, if they could take, they've talked about taking 50 a month. So, you know, we would have 50, 10 a week, 10 a week basically ready for them. And, you know, it it takes, you know, 20 months to get a calf ready for beef, to go to slaughter. And so, I mean, we had all that set up, but. Do you recall the count of the, of the, the of that herd? I, 425. When it started, but now it's, who knows what it is now because you know you've got you got dead scribbles and opens and and everything in between, you know. So who, I don't know. Did that include the bulls and the buffalo that were brought in with them? No. No. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, members. Mr. Hansinger, thank you for being here this morning. We uh, appreciate thank, it. Thank you, guys. Next, we have Vlad Oldfield, Osage LLC. Mr. Oldfield, thank you for being here this morning. You're allowed to make any opening statements, and then I'll open it up for members to ask questions, sir. I'll preface my statement saying I've been a veterinarian for 35 years now. I'm used to dealing with people one-on-one. -on -one. Public speaking is not my stand. <laughs> I, I'm nervous as a as it can be right now. Uh, so be patient with me, please. Congresswoman Stabler, then Congresswoman Lemon. Sir, can you tell us what your position is on the board today? Just a uh, board member. Thank you. That's all I have. Congresswoman Lemon. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Good morning, Mr. O'Fell. Good morning. I'm nervous, too. But it is daunting. I can't, I can't imagine. I've never been there at that particular podium um, in front of this body. And um, so thank you for being here and taking your time to be here today. Um, so being a veterinarian for 35 years, would it be fair to say that you're subject matter expert as far as all the businesses that we currently have um, would be dealing with um, taking care of the cattle and livestock would be, definitely be a subject matter expert in that area? Yes, ma'am. That's my wheelhouse. And you owned your own business as a veterinarian, is that yes, correct? Yes, ma'am. 34 you, years. 34 years. In. Okay, sorry. Okay. Um, what do you see as, what do you see as our next biggest possibility for business ventures with Osage LLC? And the reason I ask is because in listening to the meetings, um, I know that in the last six months there hasn't been any um, anyone, any outside entities coming to pitch any ideas. And before the prior board would have at least one, sometimes two every month of ventures of looking out, people wanting the, us, you know, the Osage LLC to invest or coming to you guys with, um, you know, business ideas or partnerships. So in the last six months, I know that hasn't happened. Um, so based on your current Osage LLC, um, strategic plan and your business development plan, what do you see it as like the, the best possibility of the next business that's going to take off for us? Oh, gosh, ma'am. Uh, as a brand new business, I draw a blank on the one. I don't have a recommendation to that. One business I'm extremely excited about, I go to the meetings and I'm, I'm really fired up about it, is the Skyway 36. We're right on the prefaces. I, it's my opinion of that being a major company, a major money maker, something those Osage people can be extremely proud of. And we're right on the edge. We're not operational, <clears throat> excuse me, right now. 
And if we could get some funding, some grant, the money comes in, we can get operational and, 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 and really develop that in a short period of time and get it to making money. That's something that I, I, I hear about the presentations on it and stuff. I said, let's move forward. This, this has so much potential. That's one business that it's not a new business for us, but it, we're right on the edge. I, and if we don't get the pro, if we don't move forward now, we'll lose that opportunity. Uh, that's uh, it's not a new business, but it's something right. I, I it's my my personal that I'm I, I'm excited about. I think we need to really progress with it and stay on top of it and and, and manage it properly. And and it did that answer your question? It did. Thank you so much. Um, and, and, and it would be somewhat new to us because it's not yet operational, so it's fair to say that. And um, we do know that capital infusion is very important in, in a lot of these um, business ventures in going forward. And we have tried, as this, this body has tried to give the Osage LLC um, dollars before that, of course, you know, it hasn't worked out um, or haven't been in agreement with um, executive and they've been vetoed, but that's part of what we live through and the politics that we play, that we work through, I shouldn't say play. Um, you know, you guys had a feedlot that you developed um, prior with Osage Ranch when you were a board member on that board also that you developed with um, OSU, Oklahoma State University. And um, it was, the, the idea was great, right? Um, providing uh, beef to our butcher house because we had a place for it to go. Currently, though, the, butcher, the feedlot is no longer under the ranch or Osage LLC, correct? I think that's correct. So do you know what department it is under? No, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Mr. Elfield, thank you for being here today. We appreciate uh, you coming in. All right, members, we are now at confirmation of appointees. It would require a motion, a second, and a vote. Just speaker. I'm sorry. It's I'm, okay, I, speaker, I, uh, you're fine. <laughs> I'll make a motion to confirm Amy Tall Chief to the Osage Nation Gaming Enterprise Board. There's a motion and a second to confirm Amy Tall Chief to the Osage Nation Gaming Enterprise Board. Any discussion? If not, roll call, please. Congressman Bighorse? Yes. Congressman Hamilton? Yes. Congressman Keene? Yes. Congresswoman Lemon? Abstain. Congressman Maker? Yes. Congressman Potts? Yes. Congresswoman Redcorn? Yes. Congresswoman Rivard? Yes. Second Speaker Shaw? Yes. Congresswoman Stapler? Yes. Congressman Tillman? Yes. Speaker Goodfox? Yes. Amy Tall Chief has been confirmed to the Osage Nation Gaming Enterprise Board. Congresswoman Stabler. Motion to confirm Holly Wells to the Osage Nation Gaming Enterprise Board. Second. second. There's a motion and multiple seconds. Thank you. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote, please. Congressman Hamilton? Yes. Congressman Keene? Yes. Congresswoman Lemon? Yes. Congressman Maker? Yes. Congressman Potts? Yes. Congresswoman Redcorn? Yes. Congresswoman Rivard? Yes. Second Speaker Shaw? Yes. Congresswoman Stabler? Yes. Congressman Tillman? Yes. Congressman Bighorse? Yes. Speaker Goodfox? Yes. Holly Wells has been confirmed to the Osage Nation Gaming Enterprise Board. Speaker. Congresswoman Rivard. I'll make a motion to confirm Teresa Rutherford to the Osage Nation Tax Commission. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call, please. Congressman Keene? Yes. Congresswoman Lemon? Yes. Congressman Maker? Yes. Congressman Potts? Yes. Congresswoman Redcorn? 
Yes. Congresswoman Rivard? Yes. Second Speaker Shaw? Yes. Congresswoman Stabler? Yes. Congressman Tillman? Yes. Congressman Big Horse? Yes. Congressman Hamilton? Yes. Speaker Goodfox? Yes. Teresa Rutherford has been confirmed to the Tax Commission. Thank you. Speaker. Congresswoman Rebard. Thank you. I'll make a motion to place Nancy Pills or com confirm Nancy Pillsbury to the Osage Nation Foundation Board. Second. second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call, please. Congresswoman Lemon? Yes. Congressman Maker? Yes. Congressman Potts? Yes. Congresswoman Redcorn? Yes. Congresswoman Rivard? Yes. Second Speaker Shaw? Yes. Congresswoman Stapler? Yes. Congressman Tillman? Yes. Congressman Big Horse? Yes. Congressman Hamilton? Yes. Congressman Keene? Yes. Speaker Goodfox? Yes. Nancy Pillsbury has been confirmed to the Osage Foundation Board. We are now in motions and notices. Congressman King. I want to make note the rules, ethics, and engrossment will meet. Um, let's go 1125 right after session. Thank you. Until noon. Until noon. Yes. Thank you. Congresswoman Stabler. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, Health and Social Services Committee meeting will be from 1 to 3 p.m. today. Thank you. Congresswoman Lemon. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Government Operations Committee meeting will be today from 3.15 until 4.15 p.m. And I will make the motion to Madam adjourn. Speaker. Sorry. Congressman Potts. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I'd like to uh, move to add executive appointee Galen Crum on Monday's agenda for confirmation. Motion and a second. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying yes. 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 No. No. Any opposed say no. One no. Stabler Lemon. Madam Speaker. Give me one second, please. Congressman Potts. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I'd like to make a motion to add executive appointee Hank Hangzinger on Monday's agenda for confirmation. Second. Motion and a second. All of those in favor of the motion signify by saying yes. Yes. Any opposed say no. 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 Stabler Lemon, thank you. Okay, I'm going to ask for a roll call, please. <clears throat> Congressman Maker? Yes. Congressman Potts? Yes. Congresswoman Redcorn? Congresswoman Rivard? Yes. Second Speaker Shaw? We have two microphones on. Congressman Yes. Yes. Thank you. Congresswoman Stabler? No. Congressman Tillman? Yes. Congressman Big Horse? Yes. Congressman Hamilton? Yes. Congressman Keene? Yes. Congresswoman Lemon? No. Speaker Goodfox? Yes. Madam Speaker. I'm not ignoring you. Give me just one second. I'm writing all this down. Congressman Potts. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I'd like to make a motion to add executive appointee Lad Oldfield on Monday's agenda after uh, for confirmation. Second. Motion and a second. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying yes. 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 Any opposed say no. 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 Roll call, please. Congressman Potts. Yes. Congresswoman Redcorn. No. Congresswoman Rivard? Yes. 
Second Speaker Shaw? No. Congresswoman Stabler? No. Congressman Tillman? Yes. Congressman Bighorse? Yes. Congressman Hamilton? No. Congressman Keene? No. Congress Congresswoman Lemon? No. Congressman Maker? Yes. Speaker Goodfox? No. It fails. We are now at adjournment. Speaker. Congressman motion. Hamilton. Motion to adjourn until 10 a.m. Monday morning. There's a motion. Is there second. a second? Motion and a second to adjourn until Monday at 10 a.m. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying yes. 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 Any opposed say no. It passes. We're adjourned until 10 a.m. Thank you, everyone.